Investigations into the war room within the Grotto paint a harrowing picture of the drow attempts to align themselves with the orcs in the north as well as the gnolls. The champions take the opportunity to speak to Kethra about her lycanthropy and learn that she is greatly adverse to spreading her curse before deciding to head back to Mace. At the gates, the party bids Kethra farewell, sensing her discomfort at the city, though some members of the group felt it went deeper. The champions made their report to the king, who responded swiftly by setting Karenina to work preparing a gala to raise defense funds for the city. All right, so we are going to pick up. You guys have, for the most part, been left to your own devices in um, in your suite. Karenina has gone off to prepare for the party, get things in order, get things set up. What are the rest of you up to? Okay, so for the next untold hours, until he gets bored or finds something better to do with his life, He's going to be practicing walking in shoes. That's what Greg's doing, and uh, he breaks a few vases. Hopefully nothing too expensive. <laughs> After, like, the third one, servants come in and just remove the breakables from the room and walk out. That's for probably, the best. Probably for the best. Don't say a word. <laughs> they don't say a word. They don't look at you. They don't say a word. They just come in, take, and leave. <laughs> All right, I... I think I almost got it! <laughs> like, one servant. Ooh. <laughs> and just walks out. <laughs> uh, that's what Craig's basically doing. Scratch, Jill Tour. While you're get waiting and resting for the party, the ball tonight, are you doing anything in particular? Just napping, resting? I'm looking out the window for escape route. Make me an investigation check. Uh, hmm. Investigation is plus six. So 22. 22. All right. So as you're looking at this window, you see that the lock is quite intricate. But you know that that would be trying to get from the outside in. It would be difficult. From the inside out, you can flip the latch. And as you look down at the bare stone wall you go yeah i would definitely be flying out of this because trying to climb down this would be a suicide mission it's perfectly smooth there's no vines no nothing it's almost as if it is clipped specifically to keep people from being able to climb the walls yeah, understandable understandable yeah. and you do see part of the cityscape from your window it's a beautiful uh view but you also see that you are not directly above there's space between but probably about 50 feet out from you is a rampart where guards are walking they're probably 50 feet out and about 20 feet down okay so we're pretty high up you're pretty high up yeah okay also keep in mind the castle is built on a hill a tall hill right okay so the what would be the same technical floor might be at two different elevations gotcha all right okay so so i'm getting the, the guards don't generally you tend not to look up a lot right they tend not to but when you look i was gonna say when you look at the guards that are here you do notice that they are the gold and maroon colored armors and cloaks of the Morning Stars. And they seem a lot more vigilant than regular guards. They do scan the skies from time to time. It's not like they're constantly looking up, but they do look up because they are at a higher elevation and there are winged beasts. Fair. No. There is even a song going around about a dragon. Right. Oh, that, that been... dragon was slayed, though. But there's also been rumor of a larger dragon. <laughs> yeah. And this is yeah, true. Yeah, the, the father. <laughs> Balls tend to take place at night, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, if anything hits the fan, I, at least I know a window I can go out of. <laughs> 
Right. That's all. Perfect. Scratch, anything you're up to? I think I'm just resting, taking a cat nap. All right. So, Piper, what are you up to? Well, I need to go actually ask my plus one. <laughs> you do need to ask your plus I one. I do actually need to go ask. Um, so I need um, an escort through the hedge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's fun when you get to that point because you request the escort and there's a guard there's like, um, to, to where, ma'am? Uh, I need to go to the market district and speak with the very attractive blacksmith. <laughs> One of the female guards just kind of looks over at the male guard, kind of nods her head like, yeah, yeah, he is. And then kind of <laughs> goes what? back to the stoic look. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, see, see, she knows. Uh, y yeah, yes, but um, he's like looking between you and her like, oh, fuck. <laughs> But, I mean, uh, you're, you're quite handsome yourself. Uh, th thank you, that wasn't the concern. Anyway, um... Uh, <laughs> I mean, we we never got... I, I don't want you to think it's like, no, you're trapped here, but it's like, we never got word that we could escort you out. Oh. Uh, if you like, we can send someone to go get him for you, if you need him for something. Um, I, I'm... Hmm. Send a message, or or pick him up, or <laughs> yeah. Um, let me just let me just write him a, a quick little little note, and if it could be delivered to the Ringing Hammer, that would be. Do you, uh, what, what did you need him to come back here at any point, like, or, or are you? Um, he is hopefully, if he agrees, he would be my plus one for the ball. Yeah, so I'll write him a note. Um, basically, like. Good morning, handsome. Um, so I know we had a planned a date, but things have happened, and I was hoping you wouldn't mind being my plus one for the ball tonight. If not, we will. That's fine, and we will have our dinner another night. Kisses, Piper. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> He'll take the letter, and you see, like, the female guard reach her hand out, and he takes the letter, and he just looks at her and goes, I I'm going to send Corey to do this one. <laughs> and he just kind of walks away, and you see, like, this slight disappointment in her eyes, but she's still kind of smirking a little. Oh, he's just... he's the jealous type. It's fun to mess with him sometimes. I can imagine. He's yours? Hmm... We're getting there. He's, uh... Never gotten the balls to actually ask. Ah, uh, well... It's one of those assumed things. We, we don't really go after anybody else, but... But at the same been... time, it hasn't been made, like, official official? Yeah, it's it's one of those. It's really gotcha. hard with, uh... Within the guard, we're not really supposed to date each other. Mm, yeah, it's of course. Of which policy. is... But at the same time, the feelings are still there. Well, at the same time, it still happens. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, it's one of the worst kept secrets in the card. Yeah. Well, um, if you need any help, I'm pretty good at being a wingwoman. I appreciate it. It's more he just needs to... Grow a pair! <laughs> <laughs> he needs to gain the confidence to do it himself. What was what was your name? What was your name, sweetie? Uh, Marigold. Marigold. Very pretty name, by the way. My mother was a florist. And I bash people's heads in for a living. Makes sense. I mean... <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But you can make flower patterns out of blood splatters. Well, that's what I like the morning star for. <laughs> it's like a thistle. <laughs> she kind of gestures to it on her hip. Yeah, no, I see that. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your help, by the way. I You're appreciate welcome. it. He'll send Corey out and should be about an hour or so before you for you to hear back. Okay. I just I feel so bad having to first I had to postpone it because we did a mission for the king, and now that quiet intimate dinner that we had planned is now a big formal thing. I just hope he's okay with it. 
Uh, he he was the priest, right? Mm-hmm. After the whole thing with the, the gods disappearing started happening, he managed to, to bounce back from that. I'm sure this is nothing. Okay. He seems like a really nice guy, and he does superb craftsmanship. He does, he does. He actually was uh, one of the people who helped design the armor for the Morning Stars. Really? Mm-hmm. The, the metal's not painted. This is, uh... This is actually worked in. The 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 maroon is worked in to the metal itself. He, he adds it when, uh... When in the heating. And actually, the metal he uses to create the redding, uh, reddening effect uh, makes it stronger than normal metal. I, I like, kind of, like, reach a hand out, but I'm like, may I? May I touch? Yeah, sure. I just, like, touch it, like, that is... That is impressive. Mm -hmm. And then the gold inscribing is, you know, something we do. Mm -hmm. That's that's something that's done by the artisans here. He just makes the metal, the metal work. He, he can do the decoration, but it's time consuming. You should see my friend uh, Craig's axe. Flynn actually made it, and it's a beautiful weapon. I'll have to take a look. Mm -hmm. So about an hour will pass. And Craig is... He's starting to get... Actually, you know what? Craig, make me a deck save. Sure. Seven. <laughs> so you get into the hallway and you... You don't even know how you got in the hallway. You go down. Like, you are... You're like, I got this, I got this, I got this. Your toe hits your heel and you start floundering forward and you feel something grab the, like, the, your shoulder and pull you back. And Marigold just turns you around back that way. You, as you look, as you almost fell down a flight of stairs. Thank you. And he starts welcome. hobbling the other way. <laughs> so that hour passes and you're all sitting there and the male guard who I'll say is named Ethan. Ethan enters and Flynn is next to him looking very confused. He's looking around. Oh. He's looking very confused. He's like, um, holds up the letter. So. Hi. <laughs> hi. What? Um, <laughs> the short answer is the mission for the king led to us finding out about something else going on that necessitated the need for a ball to raise funds for something. And since we were required to go, and I felt really bad about canceling on you or, you know, rain check before, um, if you, um, wanted to, um, come to the ball. <laughs> uh, sure. This is the weirdest... I know. <laughs> First time someone asked him out by armed guard. <laughs> it, it, I wanted to I wanted to come and talk to you myself, but weren't exactly given permission to leave as of yet. Uh, yeah, you just didn't have clearance, and to get clearance we have to wake the king up, and we don't want to wake the king up. Ethan just kind of like... Yeah, yeah, that, that. Like, that's why I really wanted you to know you're not prisoners. We just didn't have clearance yet. You'll have clearance, but he's asleep. And this is that this is not the time to wake him up. Yeah. But I also thought um, not only would it be nice to, you know, dance with you and just have a nice night out, kind of. Um, you could also get in touch with some nobles, get yourself some more work, that kind of thing. That, that would be pretty interesting. Um, I have to say, this is probably going to be the most intimidating first date ever. And yeah, I, I, I know, once I'm dated a barbarian, so... I'm so sorry. It wasn't ever meant to be this intimidating. Oh, that, that's fine. Just, um, and then, like, uh, a servant comes up from behind him and starts measuring him. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> We're doing this. And then, you know, you guys kind of spend the rest of, uh, the afternoon, resting, relaxing, in Flynn's case, bathing. Mm -hmm. 
uh, <laughs> because he's covered in sweat and and dirt and grime from the forge. <sighs> yeah, little That's... bit of a shame that that nice. I mean, the smell never really truly fully goes away. But... No, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you each get presented and dressed, and I'm gonna ask you what you're wearing. Uh, it's it's basically a green vest with a very nice leather belt with like a gold uh, thing that's kind of a pull through in a way, just because he's like so broad and stuff like that, like for a gnome and it's a little weird. So they kind of just adjusted where they're like, okay, sleeves and uh, shirt doesn't work for him. So it's basically like bare chested, um, black slacks and everything. He has sh shoes, but they're more sandalish, I feel just because they've learned their lesson. And uh, also they can't afford to break any more vases. Uh, and he found a bow tie and he thought it was really cool. So he's basically chippendaling it with basically almost like a shirtless, almost open vest. I'm picturing, as far as the shoes are concerned, I'm picturing, uh, you know, those like goddess sandals where they kind of wrap up the calf. Yeah. They have those for men as well in that time period. like The gladiator those, sandals. The gladiator sandals. So it's like... We don't want him kicking them off in the middle of the uh, the room by accident, so we're strapping them on. But it's not enough material that he should trip over it. <laughs> Alright, so who wants to do the next description? I suppose I can go. Um, basically a short, like, flowy sleeved, um, like, almost like a gun y color, like a steel colored dress. But it has some, has some shimmer to the fabric, and it's A-line long. Um, asymmetrical hemline and all that, so a little higher in the front, but long. So it's it's pretty, it's modest, but you know, still a little showy. With just a nice pair of black shoes. Flaunt what you got. Exactly. Scratch and gel tour. Uh, I'm wearing monk's robes, and they are a green with uh, red trim on them. They're, they're more or less the same kind of robes I currently wear, but they're much nicer, much cleaner, and uh, just just nicer. A richer fabric. Yeah, they're, they're made of a much nicer material, and they're clean. <laughs> Alrighty. Jiltor. Long white sleeve shirt, brown braces around my wrist. Uh... A dark, a dark gray vest over top, a red tie, and I do have a looks to be a cloak with that's red on the inside, dark gray on the outside, and mm -hmm. a red tie. Yeah, he looks like the Phantom of the Op. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not wearing the I'm not wearing the cape at the moment. Yeah, but just kind of like slung over your arm. A, a bit, a bit, a bit. Standout-ish. I'm good. I mean, you are the dragon slayer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Standout-ish. Uh, I'd I'd I want the cat to stand out. <laughs> no, the cat's not. gonna stand out no matter what, so... Exactly, I want to make sure it stays that way. <laughs> and the gnome tripping over his own two feet. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing better. Like, his toes can kind of feel the ground, so just like he's a little more comfortable. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Still tripping over your own two feet. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Even with, in his normal state, he could still fall on his ass. So, yeah, I let that do the attention grabbing. All right, so Flynn will come out cleaned for the first time you've ever really seen him. His uh, long, kind of whitish blondish hair pulled back into a tail, although there are some parts of it that are still brushing against his face that cannot be tamed. Uh, he has this billowing white shirt where the sleeves are, are kind of poofy. And it kind of it does this nice thing of offsetting the fact that you one of his arms is bigger than the other. You can't really tell like this. He has this dark gray vest that actually kind of pins the rest of the poof of the shirt down. So it goes from being poofy at the arms to slimmer around the chest. Black pants and a pair of boots that go up to just below his knee. And his holy symbol is 
brazenly hanging on the outside of the shot. Oh, how brazen of him. Well, mm. considering how, uh, how people feel about religion at this point in the world, he's, he's definitely showing off. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Let's see it, babe. So you guys are led by Ethan and Marigold, who are your escorts at the moment, uh, down to where the ball will be held. And as you step up, the doors are opened before you. And Sarah, what do we see? So the first thing you see is a very, um, the lighting is a very rich, warm tones. Uh, there are these great banners, the kings, you know, there's heraldry of all these different, uh, you know, houses and towns and, and uh, army units and, and all these, all these banner heraldry with, um, with like lights strewn through them. And they're, so the banners are kind of hanging down and then swept and pinned up against the wall. So it makes almost like a tent kind of effect. Uh, as you look down the down the hallway, the next thing that catches your eye, besides the, well, in addition to I guess the chandelier, is that there's a lot of shit hanging from the ceiling. I've um, I've worked those parties. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's um, uh, uh, lots of lots of like greenery. Well, it's not so much green now because it's starting to get more autumny, but um, like 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 vines and, and fruits and berries and and very like kind of woodsy and and a nice uh, a nice arrangement of that kind of stuff um, and you also see um, so if you look closely at the chandelier because um, like all the chandeliers are like very well very brightly lit but it's not candle lights um, because candles drip wax and wax gets on your outfit and nobody wants that. Magical lighting. So, oh, it's so if you look very closely, um, instead of a candle, each one is like one of us would say, oh, it looks kind of like a light bulb, but it's, so it's like a glass bulb. And then inside is like, it's like a little pixie or like a fairy or something. And they're glowing. But like, if you look closely, they're also like, they're, this is clearly a job for them because like some of them are like reading dirty magazines, some of them are smoking, um, some of them are just like wiggling their butts at people. Like it's it, there's a lot going on, but you'd have to get close enough to see that. So this, these aren't kidnapped so, fairies forced into work. These are no, here, guys. No. We're gonna pay you. Just hang yep. out at this party for a few hours and glow. Yes. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> yes, very much so. Uh, you can tell which ones are the smokers because the bulbs are a little sooty at the top. <laughs> but from a distance, it has a beautiful, warm, candle-like glow. Um, and then if you look at the tables, uh, much like how there's a lot of shit hanging from the ceiling, there's also a lot of shit on the tables. From from a distance, you're kind of like, what the hell are all these knickknacks? As you get a little bit closer, you can see some of them are little... Um, little containers with flowers and some of them are these very artful decorative sculptures are made out of metal and some of them are made out of crystals and and you know there's some of them are, they're like little knickknacky looking things like some of them look like animals and some of them are like little castles and and um it's 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 very artful in a bit of a haphazard decorative way um and a little bit pack ratty but um, like a lot of the gnomes that are attending the party are like, oh, what a wonderful decoration. You know, they're very, it's very gnomic in, in its, in its, uh, artistic style. Hmm. And the, um, there's, a, there's like a lot of wood motif. There's a lot of like trencher, you know, the, the plate that goes under the plate. Um, lots of bold colors. Uh, but yeah, it's a very, it's a very warm, almost cluttered but uh, again artistically so like you can't quite put your finger on why it works but it does and m moving about there are people there but no one's sitting yet people are still kind of walking around schmoozing talking and you do see Karenina standing and speaking to a pair of humans now Karenina 
how are you dressed? <laughs> um, you ever seen a quinceanera dress? Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Full poofy skirt, like very wide. <laughs> very wide. This isn't my party, but this is my party. <laughs> this is my party and I, I am here for it very it's like gauzy uh like just like layers and layers and layers of gauze it's it's like a it's a nice pink it complements her her bluish skin and her darker blue hair very nicely but yes it's like somewhere between it's somewhere between bubble gum and barbie pink um, i love it i love it yeah very very elaborately beaded bodice big tall poofy sleeves like like the mutton chop sleeves like from like Ariel's wedding dress because that was at the end of the 80s when mutton chops were sleeves were in uh, yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah. the big poofy sleeve up at the up at the shoulder and then it's narrow uh on the on the arms um and when you know when you you nobody's going to see her shoes because the dress is so big but if you saw her shoes like Big stilettos, like big stilettos. She's taller than she was before. Yeah. Well, she was wearing tall shoes before, and now she's even taller. Can I make one suggestion? What? Ha do you know those those big hats that, like, the Southern Belle hat? Oh, like a like a church hat. Yeah, but like big and, and pink and matching the dress perfectly. It's uh, she has a little fascinator. Um which is like those little like tea hats. Oh, you know? I like that uh, more. And yes. And it's like cocked, it's like cocked to the side and it's it's like a flat kind of a hat and then it has the same kind of tool, has like a big loopy thing poking out and then um, perched right in the middle is a live bird. So as you as you walk in uh they are very close to where the entrance is cuz Karenina part of her job is greeting the guests as they arrive. And she is speaking to these two humans. The, the man is, I don't want to say older. He's like middle age, but he's leaning into those older years. His hair is thinning, but not going bald. It's uh, silvery, but not full gray. And he's just, I love what you've done with this card. And it reminds me of the hunt. And as he says that, you see his wife just kind of roll her eyes a little bit, but like smile through it. Uh, and Karenina, you know, uh, Lord and Lady Nornan, she's not rolling her eyes at you. She's rolling her eyes at the fact that her husband hunts. Oh. You, you know that he is not a good hunt. He's one of those guys that's trying to recapture his youth. It's, uh, yeah, it's like a hunting is something he does with the boys. Yeah, and he never comes home with anything. It's like, that's right. It's like the hunt. Uh-huh, honey. It's great. Right, right. He just, he wants to go to the hunting lodge and drink beer and, and shoot the shit with his boys. And then they go out on horses with crossbows and never come back with anything. Right, right, right. I got yeah. you. So, wanted you to know that she's not insulting you. She's rolling her eyes at him. Of course, of course. Who is this lady? This is Lord and Lady, Lord and lady Nornan, Sebastian and Mackenzie. Presumably, um, Karenina sees you guys trying to, like, slink by. Or she sees Piper probably trying to slink I by mean, out of... I also have a gentleman on my arm. So. Even better. Um, so, so... Oh, Craig would come right up and say hi to you. Ha! Oh, perfect. Hmm. <laughs> Hi. Oh, oh, hold. Hi, Karenna. No, 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 no. Karenna, Karenna. Hold that thought, Mackenzie. Oh, dears, why don't you come over here? Come, come meet some of the guests. Mm, would love Hi, to. I'm Craig. Hello, Craig. I am Lord Sebastian Nornan. Yes, so as I, I believe I was telling you earlier, Mackenzie, these are the um, individuals who came from Brath. Who came to uh, who came to uh, bring word of of some of of the troubles that were going on over there? Which, of course, is as I said, why we are all here. It's the the king made sure to to put me in charge of of a, such a, a last minute 
ball, but you know how these things are. <laughs> oh yes, well we, we're very excited to get this uh, this invitation. It it's been too long since we had something. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I was just saying to Philippe, and she points to the bird on her hat. I was just saying to Philippe, uh, as I was getting ready, I said, darling, you're so dusty. We must take you out of the closet, don't you think? <laughs> oh. But yes, here. So why don't you, why don't you, um, uh, we've already met, um, Craig, was it? Yes. Uh, why don't you, uh, all come introduce yourselves to, to some of our our esteemed guests and she kind of like glares like and mouths the words like patrons <laughs> at you know Sebastian pops up on Craig's shoulder he has a bow tie too my word what a handsome little creature yeah oh dear um, <laughs> Philippe the bird kind of gives like a ha ah! <laughs> this is Sebastian he's dressed up to the nines I think they said I don't know what that means Oh, well, he's only in a bow tie, so I think he's more to the fours, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what a strong name for a, f a handsome little creature. <laughs> can I leave this area? <laughs> you, you you can technically, but uh, no, you'll have to slip No, no, away. no, no, no. She sees you. She clocks you and grabs your arm and like very like smoothly, like with like a hand, a hand at your back, like and a hand on your on your arm like oh and this is gel tour perhaps you've heard of him he's a dragon slayer no you are the one who yes. brought said beast down nope mistake he was i believe your name is in the song which um i don't know if you've heard i don't think it's quite finished yet but uh i believe that this charming tiefling and she kind of like gestures up and down i believe you're working on that song are you not my dear and she like bats her eyelashes like very oh don't worry it's quite done and it's actually getting quite popular it is a pleasure to meet you lord and lady and i give a curtsy uh, uh, they respond with the curtsy and bow appropriate and mackenzie goes I've heard of the song. I haven't gotten the chance to hear it myself. It's mostly been out in the market district, has it not? Yes, I think it's one of those body types. You know, you know how they are. But, it's um, made its way to the boiling kettle so oh, far. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps we'll be lucky enough for you to play it for us this evening at some point. Perhaps so, I would be honored. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure she'll be far too busy. Oh, come to, now, to, Karenina. To be working on a night like this. It's always lovely to have us share our skills and assets with one another. And I'm sure you are, you know, Flynn, the amazing blacksmith. You see her, uh, make an yes. insight check real quick. Who, me? Uh, anyone who's looking at Mackenzie's face. <laughs> Uh, 16. Actually, no. Insight yet. Insight has a thing with, um, my performer's grace. So that is actually a 19. Mm -hmm. Ha! I have, eight, I have an 18. All right. Because uh, that's a solid nine. So Craig doesn't notice. Uh, 13. 13. You are paying attention, so you would notice this as well. Uh, 16. 16. All right, so... Credina, you're not you don't really care about Flynn as much, so you're paying attention more not. to Mackenzie. Mm. You see a crack in that veneer. Mm. You see that like we went from having a lovely conversation to that smile just went from real to fake real fucking fast. It's in the eyes. It's all in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Everyone else sees that as well, except for Craig. Craig sees that uh, Sebastian is very interested in Sebastian and the other way around. <laughs> um, oh, so Lord Sebastian loves little animals and whatnot, so he finds yeah, it very it's like Sebastian's really into Sebastian. Me, hmm. yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's not, not like that I want joke. to hurt your animal. It's oh, look at the funny little lemur creature. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying he's really into Sebastian. I wonder why. <laughs> the bird is like he's easily <laughs> entertained by the the tiny animal making funny noises. The bird on the hat is like side eyeing Sebastian real hard. But the rest of you, you see that veneer crack, but you also see there's a little smirk playing on 
Flynn's face. Like, you you can tell that he knows he's making her uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And he's perfectly okay with that. I kinda, um, you know, I give his arm just the slightest squeeze. Just like, I see that. Alright, if, if, um, I presume that Karenina would know if, because I suspect that it has to do with the with the holy symbol brazenly worn. It definitely, if, mm. if you noticed, uh, you know that she's having a problem with him because of the holy symbol. Um, and if anyone else who puts two and two together on that one knows that there's a reason he's wearing it the way he's wearing it. Right, I assume he's doing it to make people uncomfortable deliberately. And it makes pe uh, it makes the right people uncomfortable in his mind. Okay, so so this could potentially be an issue for me. It could potentially be an issue for you. Okay, okay. Because now <laughs> I'm wondering if I should have been bitchier. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, since Flynn has been introduced, lady, it is good to see you. How's that? set of arrowheads working out Lord Nornam. Yep. Oh, 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 uh, lovely, lovely. Uh, they, they, uh, <laughs> they, um, very easy to remove from the trees. <clears throat> Having problems with the animals? No, no problems with the animals. None whatsoever. I just, I, I don't have any relevant data to get back to you on. Ah, well, Maybe you can speak with our esteemed Dragon Slayer on uh, ways to improve your shot. I'm sure he would definitely be the one to talk to. Mm -hmm. Oh, right so, right so. He turns to you, Jeltor. Come, my boy, let's uh, let's talk shop. Now, what kind of bow do you prefer, <laughs> short or long? And he just kind of leads you away from, or he tries to lead you away if you follow from the group. Oh, yeah, sure. Get some away from these people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he starts chatting with you about weaponry and your preferred type of ammunition. Uh, so he, he's trying to talk shop. He takes you over to where like the snacks are laid out and drinks and whatnot. Oh, I haven't even talked about what the snacks are. Um, <laughs> but yes, and while that's while that's happening, because Karenina saw. Um, oh man, you gotta like him big and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like really? this guy. Um. Because because Mackenzie like because she saw what was happening, um, Corona is gonna gonna turn to Piper and Flynn and be like, "Well, I'm sure you have uh, some some more people to meet. Uh, of course, I think of if course. you go over there, Lord and Lady Zillion are, are, are I believe um, very interested in talking to you and and hearing all about your adventures there." They have zillions of tales, as we say, <laughs> and they love to collect more and, and just really hear from people. And I think that you'll fit right in over there. And why don't you take your your um, uh, date, your friend, your um, couldn't possibly be your date, but your, your uh, take your friend with you. And June. just oh, uh, <laughs> Lord and Lady, Karina, and she Karina, said, sweetheart, may I just ask one question? Why is it impossible for him to be my date? Oh, because um, I just didn't know that you would have had time to get word out to him, uh, since I'm sure he's out very busy. You know how it is. He had to take time off. But um, um, oh, Regis, Regis, darling, look, it's um, it's the the storyteller I was telling you about. Why don't you go on, go on? And she just kind of like gestures them away and and turns back to um, to to Mackenzie. Uh, so Flynn will take the lead on the mm -hmm. on the way over, and he's just yeah. He knows when he's being dismissed. Well, he's also grinning. He goes, "Oh, it's gonna be a fun night." You see why I wanted you to come? Oh yeah. I wonder if I can get her to pop a blood vessel. <laughs> Maybe, but well, luckily she'll pop several. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so Brian. Yes. I'm assuming just because of every TV show I've ever seen, you know, accurate. Um, <laughs> there is a there is a buffet somewhere. Oh yes, over by where Jill Torres. Oh, so uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> ah yes, and this is what was your name again, dear? And as 
before you get a chance to say your name, Mackenzie turns <gasps> and like eyes wide, mouth open, like completely agape, like what am I looking at kind of face. Nice to meet you. My name is Scratch. Yes, he's um uh, uh, from the north. <laughs> and she's like kind of like gesturing like, this is Lady Mackenzie Nornan, and this is Scratch, one of the adventuring party I was telling you about. She, like, has her hand, like, up and out to shake or or offer it to be kissed or whatever, but she, like, she's staring so hard, her hand's just kind of floating there. So I would do the, um, one fist over my chest and bow. Um, it's a, it's a pleasure, um... She, like, goes to, like, mimic it, uh, but, like, sh she can't pull her eyes away, so it's this awkward, like, kind of lurch forward a little. <laughs> oh, Mackenzie, dear, don't be so silly. He's, he's just, uh, he's, he's, he's quite interesting, don't you think? Though, tell, tell us, tell us a little bit about where you're from, my dear Scratch. I'm sure, I'm sure Mackenzie would love to hear all about it, since she's clearly so gobsmacked at having never seen one of your people before. And she's, like, got a very light kind of, like, ha, 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 sort of a tone. Like, laughing it off. Like, oh, this isn't awkward at all. Like, come <laughs> on. I come from the Veiled Jungle. Oh, um. Oh, that's so interesting. Where's that, dear? Is that what you call Willow Grove? I... You know, it's the, it's the place that has all of the, well, all of the willows, obviously. I do not know that name. Oh, never. Oh, that's so. It's no matter. Don't worry about it. I'm. I'm sure that you. You have all sorts of interesting tales and tales. <laughs> and she like looks at Mackenzie and it's like, is that so clever? Mackenzie still looks shell shocked. The cat has a tail. Get it? Oh dear. Why don't we get you a drink, dear? <laughs> and she and she, and she like grabs um uh -huh. Mackenzie by the elbow and is like, let's go get you a drink. Clearly. You know, we need to loosen you up a little. You, you like lead her away, and she's still kind of yeah, like by the, turning by the elbow. and looking at him as you guys yes. leave. Like, ah, uh, what? As she leaves, um, Karen and his kind of mouth, like, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but like with a very like you know like exaggerated like popular girl in high school, like sorry, you know, kind of look on her face. As Karen leaves, you hear her her saying like. Oh, I think that the bubble, pi the bubble fizzly punch over is over here, and it's it's perfectly delicious. We just had it mixed up this afternoon. Ba -ba 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 -ba, you know. Oh no, they're near the snack table. They're coming near it. But before that happens, sorry. Before we go on, I just wanted to add one other thing. While Karen and I was over there, um, during the entire exchange, the bird on her hat was staring very intensely at Scratch, and did not make a sound. And just like Headley's like wide bug eyes, just like, mm. and then like as they were walking away, just the head. They're falling. getting bigger. I don't I? Yeah, I don't like this at all. You know. Okay, sorry. Go on. Scratch, you feel a presence to your left, and you look over, and there is a half elven gentleman. He is wearing similar clothes to what you saw Flynn in except he has a jacket over his as well. And he just hands you a glass and goes, well, she's a bit much, isn't she? <laughs> yes, a bit. And I accept the glass. It is cool, and it has an amber liquid in it. I take a sip. It's smooth, but it burns. So you recognize, ooh, small mm. sips. Very quickly. Yeah. But it has an almost honeyed sweetness to it. Um, so it's a little thicker, a little more viscous than a typical drink would be, but not like sludgy. It's just like it swirls and clings to the glass a little more than you're used to something doing. And the uh, the man looks at you and goes, my name is Lord Tretel Osos. I heard your name was Scratch. Yes, it is nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine. This is nice. Yes, my uh, my husband and I make this. It's uh, distilled with honeycomb in the barrel and then run through 
pure honey before bottled. So this is something you've made? Yes, that's uh, my father's recipe. As you can tell, he kind of flicks one of his ears, which is slightly pointed. Uh, he was a wood elf. He had many interesting techniques of creating different foods and beverages. And uh, when I decided to take to uh, city life, introducing it to the, he kind of gestures around, high society, the... The novelty of it. Well, you can make money off of rich people's stupidity, and I did. Ice is made with the celis fruit. Hmm. It makes a much, a much sweeter wine than, than this. This is still nice, though. Well, I'm glad you like it. Uh have to try the Celis fruit at some point. Sounds like something that would definitely be up my alley. Sorry if I'm drifting off a bit. I'm just imagining what would it taste like to combine the two ideas together. That's what I do. My, uh, uh, he gestures out to a human man who seems to be in a heated debate with someone. Uh, my husband over there. He's more the politically minded one. I... I prefer business and experimentation. What can I learn? What can I make with what I learn? And basically that's it. I have no goals outside of that. I bore people around here. You you hear the you hear the the husband in the background saying, "No, of course not all morning stars, but what I'm saying is yeah." He, he it definitely is in the background. Like, no, I know it's not all the morning stars, but. Yeah. And you just hear uh, Traytel just kind of sigh like uh, he's on it again. All morning stars are bastards. <laughs> Amab. Yeah, Amab. <laughs> Cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave it in. But he, he just kind of sighs and rolls his eyes. He's, he's on it again. This promises to be an interesting night. Oh, it definitely <laughs> does. I should probably uh, go and check on Nicholas before he gets punched in the face by someone. <laughs> so pleasure to meet you, Scratch. It'll be me for ruining my party. And he, he <laughs> uh, gives you a, a slight bow at the uh, the shoulders and he heads over to where Nicholas is getting rather heated. So now that you've split the party. Well, it's a party. <laughs> you can go wherever you choose. Who would like uh who would like to be doing something or speaking to someone about something or uh yeah, so basically Craig saw the food from across the room and he just <laughs> right and uh he's never seen a spread this big or uh this extravagant before basically all the tears of little pastries and all of those just like the salvation and everything and just dripping onto his clothes not gonna ruin it but it's gonna be slightly like is that a stain and literally you just see sebastian doing the same towards the fruit and basically i kind of can see like right before we jump into del toro's conversation you just see both of them just look at each other and dive face first into the food there is a human man there wearing armor, mm -hmm. not not Morningstar armor, just wearing armor, and he has a helm attached to his belt. He doesn't have any weapons, but he has a helm with a long like trail of feathers falling off the top of it, mm -hmm. like almost like a waterfall of feathers, plumage, and he is watching you with horror on his face. But uh, Jeltor is still, like, chatting with Sebastian. I feel like Sebastian's doing a lot of the talking. Jeltor is just kind of nodding along. I mean, he's asking about weapon. I could tell him about, like, I tell him, I do tell him I use, I use a short bow. Uh, as for ammunition, eh, any old arrow will do. I've used, what, goblin arrows before, too. Not, though. Uh, that, those must have been quite unruly. Um, they were absolute garbage, but, uh, the bow does most of the work, thankfully. Yes, that is true. Though I wish it would uh, do more work for me. Uh, 
Uh, don't tell my wife I admitted to this, but I'm not exactly the best shot. <laughs> have you uh, have you tried stealing your breath before you take your shot? Oh yes, but uh, he kind of gestures at his large stomach. Eh, if it wasn't for the horse carrying me around out there, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to breathe at all. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm out of military age. I don't I don't know what I would do if the prince ever took the crown. Uh, Thankfully, the king is far more interested in uh, keeping our borders safe rather than going beyond them and uh, and actually fighting. Uh, Wait, uh, can I just... Sorry, as Sarah, I just... Is the implication there that the prince is a warhawk? <laughs> the sickly prince? You, you'd have to right? talk to him a little bit more about this, get more yeah, information on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jelta follow up on <laughs> <laughs> Jelta doesn't care. Jelta is more interested in uh, what if bitch. what if uh say a war was coming towards here. Oh, well as the king uh the king as you can tell by the, the fundraiser so poorly masqueraded as a uh as a ball, we know what we're here for. We just take the food and then make our decision. But uh, the king just wants to make sure that we have means of defending. I mean, Mace is built to withstand a siege. Ever since uh, the massacre of Mirrors, we in the Battle of Black Dove, we've known that we were meant to withstand sieges. But uh, the prince has these idealistic views of going out and, and defending the whole countryside. We can't afford that. We can't afford to lose the men and women, the... the, the materials he he's of the opinion that nipping this in the bud would uh would stop the war it wouldn't stop the war just prolong it let them crash against the walls and die outside them no sense for us to go out there chasing death no hear me out i think both arguments have merit to them mm -hmm. because there's always a chance that and um, God's above forgive, uh, that mace does fall. Because I've seen the armies that's coming. They're not here to play. They are very serious. Mm, that is valid. The, these... So to be fair, if they broke the outer wall, they would only get into the, the market district. They'd have to break through two more walls to get within the castle district. Uh, and I don't think they would survive that. Um, the issue dealing with these drows, they're very good with dealing, uh, dealing with underground invasion invasion tactics. Oh. I've encountered some of the things they have under their um service. A tunnel system. I never thought of a tunnel escape. Like rabbits going underground and beyond the sight of my bow. They could spring up and bite us in the tuchus. I think the thing I saw bites, maybe, looked more like it claws your face off, but yeah. Ca canonically, there's Yiddish in this world. <laughs> because you just said tuchus. <laughs> I'm okay with this. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. I'll have to run this by Korth. He, uh... He handles most of the military aspects, but that you bring up a good point, and I'm not surprised a dragon slayer must be wise as well as formidable. Eh, well, the dragon slayer part's a bit is a bit of a stretch, but um. Oh, I've heard the song. Don't you worry. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. Bards, bards have a way of doing that. Um, but um. They do a lot of things that involve stretching. <laughs> In my younger days. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. <laughs> Regardless, I do think the prince, his intentions are good for the city. Oh, I never doubted that. I just don't agree with the the strategic attempt. And to be fair, he he does have his own issues that he needs to work on. Being uh, being ill as much as he is, it's easy to send other men to die, but. Uh, it's it's harder harder when you're facing it yourself and I, I don't think he'll ever be one to be able to understand both sides of that. Mm -hmm. That's a fair point. Now when his father was young, oh 
That man was quite a warrior. Hmm. Well, let's hope the prince gets better soon, and oh yes, yes. Let's yes. hope his ideals go become a bit more small scale. Maybe expand the city little by little, rather than just trying to take on the whole frontier itself immediately. Yes, yes, yes. Well, to be fair, as he gets older, he'll become more conservative. That's how it always happens. <laughs> I guess it is. I I can feel hatred coming at me for this character. It's, no, it's, that's very funny. <laughs> no, it's he's a different generation. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's uh he's been sickly ever since his mother died. Yeah, I've heard about that. What happened there? Like, oh, she got ill and and passed, and we thought that he had caught the same thing, but uh, apparently he's been able to hang in there. Hmm. Huh. Is it like? Does anyone know how she got ill? Oh, sickness comes. It's one of those things we can't really do anything about. Around when did she get ill, though? Mm, the boy was probably, oh, don't quote me exactly, uh, he was young, probably under, under ten. She's been gone a while now. Okay. He's been six since he's been younger than ten. How old is he now? He's like twenty-two. That's a long time. It's like a pervasive illness, like, uh, that chronic exhaustion. It's not like he's been vomiting that whole time, it's just like... You know how people can have these long-spanned illnesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. But twelve years—so more than twelve years. Mm -hmm. That's a while. I'm sorry to hear about his mother's passing. Yes, yes. Well, the queen was well loved by all. Uh, King Sarath did not take it well, but he's—he's uh, he's bounced back. He's uh, very dedicated to protecting mace, protecting all within its walls. You would think it would have turned a man like him gray by now, but he's he's strong. That's good. Strong king is a good thing. Yes, yes. But we actually were... we went to school together. I, I was uh, a year or two his elder, but uh, we trained together. He was always a better shot than me, and I'm sure you don't see that as a surprise. Though I believe for a while, until, you know, age caught up with me, I was better with the sword. We're gonna kind of, like, pull out of that conversation and move along, because yeah. we haven't checked in with, uh, Piper and Flynn in a while. I will say, Brian, uh, yes? just as a quick little end thing to their conversation, uh, because if they're by the food court table, basically you just see Craig behind them, literally just on the table, just running, ow, ow, ow. With Sebastian behind him or on his shoulder just kind of munching on the fruit and stuff like that. <laughs> the the knight who's standing there just kind of reaches over and pulls a plate of these silver fruits out of your path and just kind of holds them to the side, like, guarding them almost. <laughs> Pretty much, and then he just sees Jeltor. Jeltor, this, this is from I don't know this person. <laughs> <laughs> Not making eye contact. I don't know him. We're not talking to him. Ah, uh, so Flynn and Piper were headed over towards Lord and Lady Zillian. And their daughter Avery. It was um daughter Regis Avery. and Alyssa, I believe. Regis and Alyssa, yes. Regis they're they're all well, Regis is human. Uh Alyssa, you can tell, is a wood elf. And Avery is a half elf. He is, uh, he's probably in his 30s, well-dressed, well-groomed. Uh, he looks a little nervous, just because this is a very large event. His wife, on the other hand, very cool, very calm, very collected. She's speaking quietly to Avery. Avery looks like she's about 14 years old. Hmm. So she's in those awkward years. Even as a half-elf, she's in those awkward years. And she seems uncomfortable with the situation around her, but she's putting on the air of, um, belonging. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am Piper. Ah, uh, Regis will kind of straighten up. Uh, pleasure's mine. I am, uh, 
Lord Regis Zillian, this is my wife, Lady Alessia, and our daughter, Avery. <clears throat> and this is my companion, Flynn. Flynn will kind of nod. <laughs> Regis? Flynn, how you doing? I'm enjoying watching the people here squirm. You. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of glanced to Avery. Um, do you like magic? She kind of looks at you and goes, What well, kind of magic? Well, I can give you a friend to hang out with for a little bit if you like. You could definitely use with some more friends around here. It's just adults doing boring adult stuff. And you see her mother, Avery. And she just kind of takes that deep breath, <laughs> smiles a very fake smile, and goes, Thank you, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> and you can tell the performance is for her mother, not for you. Oh, I know. I kind of make a little bit of a flick of my hand and bring Tutti out to just kind of, like, sit near her. Wow, you, you meant, like, actual magic. I was mm -hmm. expecting, like, she starts petting the cat. I was expecting, like, what, uh... What Lord Nornan does with the, the cards. I mean, I do that too, but... But Tutti is a, a very good friend of mine, and he'll definitely help you out here tonight. I appreciate that. And this time you can see, like, genuine gratitude. Yeah. Um, so I hear you like stories. Like, to her and her, and her parents. Oh, uh, yes. My, uh... My father, you see Regis kind of like, again, like kind of jump in. Uh, my father was the chronicler here at the, the castle and uh, he, he kept the histories. And so uh, I, I kind of took the position after he, uh, <clears throat> he passed. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it was years ago, but thank you. Um, so I, I actually spent a lot of my, my youth going... Out adventuring, and at this, you see Avery perk up a little, like she's excited, like maybe we're gonna get a story of it. He goes, but then I, I, I came home. I had made my fortune. I had met my lovely wife, and uh, now it's it's time for the the quiet life to settle in, to to, to kind of put the adventuring behind me. And you see Avery just crestfall. I would still, for one, like to hear the stories if you're willing to share any. Oh. I'm always I'm always open to learning more stories so I can I make a lot of music and spread people's tales far and wide so I would absolutely love to hear of your exploits. Oh uh <laughs> no I I they're so generic my stories you know fighting goblins in caves and uh, uh There is nothing generic about being a hero even on a small scale. <laughs> Amy's like yeah dad there's nothing wrong with it. Something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And he kind of gives her this look. And I need you to make an insight check on this one. Sure. Uh, 16. You see that this is an old argument. Mm -hmm. And it is not about stories. She wants to be an adventurer. You can tell she wants to be an adventurer like her father was, like her mother was. Mm -hmm. But it seems very clear that he does not want her to. And to be fair, she's 14. She's too young to do it anyway. Yeah. And to do it safely. And, you know, a teenager out on adventures. That's a bad idea. Yeah, he could lose an eye. Hi. <laughs> As Craig demolishes the buffet table demol and basically making a few people probably faint from pure disgustion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the knight uh, is, is definitely like moving away from you. Like He feels like he should intervene, but he's not going to because he's afraid to. <laughs> he's afraid to lose a hand. <laughs> yeah. But you can definitely tell this is, this is an old hashed out argument. Mm. But again, I would still love to hear the stories if you are willing to ever tell any. Maybe, maybe in the future. <laughs> and he, he kind of gives Flynn a look and Flynn just kind of smiles and does that head bob to one side like, yeah, yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> I kind of, oh, insight check on that, that head bob to Flynn. Go ahead. 
I mean, I could just ask him when we walk away. You could, but... Another 16. Were they part of the same adventuring group? You get the feeling they probably were. They they have a familiarity with each other that is very close. Like, he called him by his first name, didn't even bother with, bother with a title. The two of them keep sharing those looks, those knowing looks. You get the feeling that the three of them were part of the same adventuring party before coming back to, uh... Mm. Hmm. Before coming back to, uh, Mace. I mean, I'm sure I could... Um, get some of the details from Flynn, but, you know, different perspectives and all. <laughs> and you see Reed just like, uh, 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 what? Flynn? Hmm? And Flynn just kind of goes, I haven't told her anything, she's just this insightful. <laughs> but it was lovely to meet you and Tutti, keep Avery company, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and it is about this time that a uh, bell is rung and the king, who has been schmoozing with other people as well, goes to the head of the table. Ladies, gentlemen, I thank you for joining me here this evening. But before any long-winded speeches are given, I feel most of us are as hungry as our fine guest, Craig, over there. So why don't we all sit and eat? And you are all seated for dinner, and the feast will soon begin. This has been the Reliably Chaotic Podcast. Champions of Solane is an original Dungeons & Dragons adventure written by Brian Scharf using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set published by Wizards of the Coast. My name is Brian Scharf, and I've been your DM. You can reach me at ReliableDM on Twitter. My name is Nicole Summers, and I play Piper. And this is Jair, also known as JJ, and I play the character of Jonto Ejectus. This is Matthew Reed. And I play Scratch. This is Andrew Brown, and I play Craig. This is Sarah, and I performed the role of Vizier Karenina Mabnar. Theme music by Adrian Von Ziegler. All other music by Kevin McLeod on the Incompetech website and Adrian Von Ziegler. Detailed information about music in this episode is provided in its description. Music for this episode was selected by Nicole Summers. The episode was edited by Matthew Reed with assistance from Sarah. Contact us on Twitter at Reliably Chaotic, email us at ReliablyChaotic at gmail.com, or join our Discord server by following the link in our description. If you like our show and would like to support us, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash reliablychaotic or by leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It really does help a lot. Thank you for listening. And we hope to see you again in our next adventure. I wouldn't know what to do if uh, if the prince were to take the crown, but thankfully the the doesn't look like. Oh, my air conditioner just turned itself on. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? <laughs>